When a person has a disability, whether it be intellectual, physical, or other, it doesn't mean they have to live in a small world. Special Olympics can open some amazing doors. We're going to rejoin our guest, Stacy as she talks about her incredible experiences. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Talking Health in the 406, where we're one community under the big sky. I'm your host, Jennifer Vansicle, longtime healthcare worker turned health educator. Stacey, I did want to ask you, you identify as a person with a disability. I was wondering if you could talk more about that, about what what that is. So I have an intellectual disability. I have um, fetal alcohol syndrome. And so I have an intellectual disability. So things are harder for me to learn. I see. And um, that was must be how you got into Special Olympics originally. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a great program and it's such a vast diverse group of people that can participate in special Olympics. Um, and you've had a pretty cool experience. I'm wondering if you could tell us about, tell us about your special Olympics time and maybe some of the fun things that you've got to do with that. All right. So in special Olympics, I got started in special Olympics back in, uh, 1985. I was in high school and, uh, yeah, I started just participating as an athlete. And then I was, uh, what they called, um, Alps athlete leadership program. And so we did speeches and stuff to, for the program. And then I was, um, one of the first Sergeant Shriver global messengers, international global messengers. There was 12 of us from around the world. And, um, Sergeant Shriver is Eunice Kennedy Shriver, who, um, Eunice Kennedy Shriver was the founding founder of Special Olympics. She was um, JFK K's sister. They had a sister, Rosemary, who was uh, intellectually disabled. And so she started a, the program for people with intellectual disability to play sports. And uh, Sergeant Shriver is, was his, um, her husband. And he started, he, they had 12 athletes that would be the international global messengers. And so we, I was one of the first 12 and we got to go around the the world actually to speak on behalf of the special Olympic athletes. I got to go to China. Jeez, I've been to about, I'd say about 12 different countries on behalf of special Olympics. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of that was because I was on the international board of directors and also I was, um, on the sports rules committee. And right now I'm on the, the golf committee, international golf committee. And so I help out with the golf rules. Yeah. I'm on, I'm also, uh, a, a golf, uh, on the golf. I do, uh, golf rules. Like I, uh, I'm a, sorry. <laughs> No, you're good. Do you kind of help make up the rules and regulations that will be happening with Special Olympics around? Well, or- yeah, we help out with the we do the, we do the golf rules. I also am a rules official for golf. Oh, okay. Special Olympics, Special Olympics U.S. Games. I I go to those and uh, help out with the rules oh, on the okay. course. Nice. Yeah, and I know in. Um, your experience with Special Olympics and traveling, you got to meet some, at least one famous person. I was wondering if you could share. Oh, that. I've met, I've met, I've met, I've met some pretty incredible people. Ah, um, I got to share it. Well, yeah, who have you uh, met? Who have you met, I've, Stace? I've met a couple of the presidents. I've met uh, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Nelson Mandela, Yao Ming. Yeah, I've met, I've met so many incredible people. I can't even name them all. It's, it's been, it's been great. And I'm good, I'm good friends with Bart Connor and Nadia Comaneci. Yeah. They're and good who, friends of mine. Okay. Who, who are they? I'm afraid I don't know. Um, them. <laughs> you don't, you don't know Bart Connor and Nadia Comaneci? I don't well, think I do. So, <laughs> Maybe so I do. <laughs> they're, they're great gymnasts from, oh, okay. From, from uh, so Nadia is the, the first one to ever get a 10. Oh, okay. Gymnastics. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
and and Bart is one of the most famous U.S. men's gymnast gymnasts. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I see. I see. Thank um, you for that. Yeah, yeah. And they're 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 married um, now. Nadia is from Romania. Okay, but the, they're they live in the U.S. now, and they're they're married. Oh, but okay. They're they're good supporters of Special Olympics. Oh, fabulous! Yeah. And I hear you got to have dinner once at a really cool place in the United oh, States. Oh, the White House. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been, I've actually had dinner at the White House three times, I think. What? Oh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Three times, I think. Yeah. Wow. Stacey, that's amazing. That's, I mean, I think you take six people and put them together. And I don't know if they would have as many experiences as you did with, with Special Olympics there. Um, yeah. I did get the Spirit Award for Special Olympics. It's the the number one award. It's the top award for Special Olympics that you can get. Wow. Um, I, I got it with 12 other people, and one of the other people was Nelson Mandela. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It's hanging in my house. Awesome. As it should be. As it should be. Yeah. So, Stacey, when you got like that award and when you got to meet all those famous people and travel to all those countries, had you put your name in a hat to be entered into some sort of uh, competition for that or did, uh... no, no, it was, uh, it was, I, I'm not actually sure how I got it. I, I was actually competing in golf in China and they said, you got to come to this uh, meeting. And I said, uh, well, I'm competing. So I, I can't come to any of the meetings. Cause I was on the board and they said, well, you got to come to at least this, just one. And I said, all right, one meeting. That's all I'm coming to. And they said, okay, it's an awards meeting. It's an awards banquet. And I said, okay. And I get there and Mrs. Driver said, oh, there's the award winner. And I'm thinking to myself, we haven't even finished competition yet, you know? So I, I wasn't sure what she was talking about. And we get done and. Colin Farrell was there and everything. Yeah. And, um, all of a sudden we're, we're at this, we get, we get done with all the, the pre meet, pre, you know, what do you call those, uh, hors d'oeuvres and all that, you know, and mm -hmm. we sit down in this theater and my name's called and they call me up there to get this award. <laughs> and so it was pretty much, it was pretty surprising. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I was with, uh, let's see, the ones on the, let's see, Yao Ming got it, Vanessa Williams, Nelson Mandela, me. Yeah, I was the only Special Olympics athlete that got it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you're, you're listing off yeah. some big names there, Stacey. That's great. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. That's cool. That's, that's yeah. good. That's and it's great that to know that an athlete got that too. Yeah. 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 It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's amazing. I always Special. forget to, I always forget to mention that. Ah, that's all right. That's all right. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. What doors Special Olympics, you know, I think, I don't know, you know, if, somebody in your life has a disability it doesn't mean all the doors are shut and they need to live in a small world it can special olympics and other great programs offered out there it can oh yeah gosh just it's, really yeah expand the horizons for sure when i uh got the award they said um i said when i started special olympics i started my life that's a very cool way to put it mm -hmm. yeah so that's Pretty much what it happened. Hmm. It's well, pretty I'm, neat. I'm glad to hear you're still involved with it, with the golf. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if somebody's listening to this and they have a family member with a disability, do you know, is there criteria or a acceptance process to get into Special Olympics? Um how does one even go about getting into special and starting with special Olympics? Well, you have to have an intellectual disability or similar a disability. So yeah, there's a, there's a medical form that you do have to have 
that you have to fill out, uh, have filled out. So every three years I have to have one filled out. Um, they're good for three years and it's, everybody has to have one for every state, for every, every three years, every athlete for every state has to have one. You get one of those, you have your doctor fill it. You fill out half of it and your doctor fills out one page of it. You turn it in and that's how you get started. Okay, perfect. And we can sure put a link for Special Olympics onto our website. Yeah, the Talking Health and the 406.mt.gov. Yeah, it's somt.org. Okay, somt.org. That's a good one. We can do that. And it's everywhere in Montana, right? Do you know? Does yeah, 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 yeah. Should be pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And Stace, can you tell us about some of the sports you did in Special Olympics? I know you mentioned the golf, uh, being involved yeah, with golf, yeah, but yeah. Um, what I, else have you dove into with, with Special Olympics? So I've done 18 different sports in Special Olympics. Wow. So Montana doesn't do nearly as many sports as, well, like Washington, like I've done in Washington and stuff, but I've done like sports that I have that don't, they don't do here. Like speed skating, like speed ice skating, uh, speed roller skating, volleyball, those sports that, that I did in Washington, you don't do here. So I've done, and, and I did, uh, team handball. Um, yeah, I've done so many sports over the years. Yeah. Okay. And I, I could see, yeah, we're based on population and even. Even location where if you're in Louisiana, you might not have speed skating as an option, but you might have something else. And I could see where that could could definitely vary. I think that's something yeah, I encounter with a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stacey, I, I know we, we got to meet you through some colleagues here at work, um, and they tell me that you're a disability disability advisor. Um, and so I'm wondering if you could tell me what that is and what you you do in that role. So I'm a disability advisor for the Cancer Coalition, uh, steering committee and steering committee. And what I do is I, I, uh, I go to the meetings for the steering committee, especially, and I help out by going to the meetings and letting them know if they're missing anything about including people with disabilities. That's interesting. And I'm curious, um, you know, I know nobody ever does it intentionally, but what are some of the things you've seen just in your life where people might not have been included as much as they should, like people with disabilities? Are you, can you think of any examples? Well, I don't know if it's as much as not including as in, I don't know, not sure how to word it as in, uh, really not be sure over, how to word maybe it. even overlooking. We had a one of our other podcast guests is a person who's blind and he was telling us about how, you know, he goes into some buildings and there should be a sign next to every door in Braille that tells you what's behind that doorway and that it's been surprising at the places where those little signs aren't. And I could see something like that maybe uh, happening yeah. as well, where it's totally not intentional, totally not not meant to be um, excluded, just kind of a unawareness or. Yeah. 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 Or, or they, or I see it one way and it's like, Oh, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Because I, I see it one way and they're, and they're like, Oh, well, it never occurred to me that it could be that way. You know, Mm -hmm. it's bringing it from a different, um, a view, I think. They, they don't see it from a, the same view we do. So it's like, yeah, you got to bring it, uh, to the, uh, wh- yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. That definitely, yeah. definitely makes sense. Oh, and, um, any challenges with your healthcare, with, um, accessing your healthcare? I know at one point you mentioned you have to travel four hours to see a doctor. That's my primary care. And that's because, yeah. That's mm-hmm. because of I trust her and just finding somebody that you trust that much. Yeah. And who respects you and you feel that comfortable with. Um, mm-hmm. now I'm going to have to find that again. And it's just, 
of course, I wanted to try to find it a little closer than four hours, but right, right. It's, it's, it's just, how do you even begin? You know? Oh, it's, it's huge. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because people with disabilities are more likely to have a personal doctor than someone without. Um, and so it's, you know, I kind of get to think that they, maybe more so than most, a person with disabilities realizes the importance of having that primary care doctor and getting the checkups and, you know, not neglecting that part of themselves. Yeah. And having somebody that's not going to just take it for granted that you just, you're, you're just not going to, I don't know, just be able to, you know, know what to say. Right. Yeah. You know, or know or that no. something, know that something's not right, you know, mm-hmm. without or asking assumptions. Yeah. 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 That's somebody that can talk to you and talk you through things to get to answers instead of. Yeah. 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 Cutting corners. Then assuming it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's. uh So it's kind of, kind of scary trying to, you know, thinking about having to figure that out again. I bet so. Yeah, oh, well, this has been great, Stacy, and we definitely appreciate you sharing your story and your experiences, both, I mean, gosh, between cancer, pulmonary embolisms, Special Olympics, you've got a <laughs> lot of great experiences and stories to share. And I'm glad you're you're doing that as a disability advisor with the Cancer Coalition. And yeah, you're contributing. You're contributing big time to the world, which is awesome. It's very, well, very you. awesome. Cool, Stace. I'll, uh, we'll talk to you later. Take All right. Bye-bye. Thank All you, right. Stacy. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much to Stacy for joining us today and for sharing her awesome experiences with Special Olympics and more. If you would like more information on Special Olympics and other activities and resources provided today, visit our website at talkinghealthinthe406.mt.gov. And thank you for joining us for another episode of Talking Health in the 406, where we're one community under the big sky. Until next time, take care.